My first Bible presents God Chooses Abram. Many years later, there was a man named Abram, hey. and his wife was named Sarah. Hey. They were very happy except for one thing. They wanted to have a child, but the years passed by and they had none. On one night, Abram heard the voice of God speaking to him, Abram, I will make your family very large. All families of the world will be blessed because of you. God told Abram to leave his country and to go to a land that he will show him. Abram did not know where God would take them, but he did what God asked. Yay! Blah, 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 blah. Abram blah, told blah, blah, Sarai, blah, his blah, wife, blah, everything that blah, had blah, happened. Blah, blah. She also had a lot of trust in God. So, Abram ordered the servants to fold the tents and to load them onto the gambles. Mm. But where are we going? They asked. I don't know, Sarai <gasps> told them, and then she smiled. If Abram can wait for God to tell us where to go, I too can wait. Then, God led Abram and his wife... And his nephew Lot went with them, with his family also. They took all their possessions and servants to the land of Canaan. Here, God said to them, This is the uh-huh. land that I will give to your children. But he did not want them to be in Canaan uh-huh. yet. Not yet. So they set off. They traveled to many places. The journey began in the city of Ur, then Haran. They reached Canaan and left for Egypt. From there they retreated to return to Canaan, until Abram's servants began to argue with Lot's servants. So Abram and his nephew Lot decided to separate, taking different paths. Year after year, Abram and Sarai wanted to have a child, but Sarai had already become too old to have children. Then one night, Abram heard God say to him, Abram, look up to the sky and count the stars. Someday your family will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Then God gave Abram and Sarai new names. Abram to Abraham, meaning father of many, and Sarai to Sarah, meaning princess. Hey, hey! My first Bible presents The Cities of Sodom and Gomorrah A short time later, Abraham received three visitors who were on their way to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham knew that one of them was actually the Lord disguised as a man. Then one of the outsiders asked him, Where is your wife Sarah? We have some good and important news for you. There she is, Abraham said. And the stranger said, I want you to know that I'll be back in a year, and by then you will have a son. Sarah was very surprised by this news and asked, Even though I'm so old, I will have a baby? Is there anything impossible for God? Then Abraham went up with the three of them to a hill. From there they could see the city of Sodom and the city of Gomorrah. And one of them said, I have heard that the people who live in Sodom are truly evil. We will go to check, and if that is true, God will destroy these two places. The two men who had traveled with the Lord were actually angels in disguise, and they left for Sodom. Abraham wanted to ask God a question, but he didn't dare. However, he knew that God was his friend and also his God. Then he was encouraged to ask him, God, what if there are 50 good people in Sodom? And God answered, I will forgive the city if there are still 50 good people left. Then Abraham asked him again, What if it's only 40 good people? For those people, I won't destroy the city. What if there are 30? I will not destroy it. For 20? No. For 15? No. For 10? No, Abraham. Even for those ten, I will not destroy it, the Lord replied for the last time. When the Lord had finished talking to Abraham, he left there. 
and Abraham returned to his tent. In Sodom, all of the people were bad. The only people Abraham said to God in the evil city were Lot and his family. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Hello. He lived in Sodom with his wife and his two daughters. Mm -hmm. Lot found the angels who were disguised as men. Come to my house. There they will be safe from the evil people here, Lot told him. Even so, the people of Sodom tried to mistreat the angels. The angels told Lot, You must come with us. The Lord can no longer stand this very bad place. He's going to destroy it. We will help you escape, but for nothing in the world, do not stop and look back. A few hours later, Lot and his family managed to escape. And the Lord caused fire and brimstone to rain down on Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot and his family were safe, but Lot's wife disobeyed what God had said. She looked back and immediately turned into a pillar of salt. God fulfilled the promise he made to Abraham. He had protected the good people of Sodom. My first Bible presents Abraham's son, Isaac. Sarah didn't need to worry. For God had promised her and Abraham a son. Hey, hey. When the three strangers visited them, the Lord promised them that within a year they would have a son. Hey. And indeed, in less than a year the impossible happened. Sarah, who was already too old to have children, finally had a son. <gasps> finally! Abraham was a hundred years old when the baby was born. I'm that old? They were so happy and so grateful to God because he had finally answered their prayers. Every time Abraham saw the child, he smiled. And Sarah was smiling all the time. The boy made them so happy. They named him Isaac, which means he laughs. Right, I'm hey! Sometime later, Abraham heard the voice of God saying, Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac. I know how much you love him, and that's why I'm asking you to do this thing that is so difficult. I want you to give Isaac back to me as an offering. Abraham said nothing. The God he knew would never want him to kill his own son. Abraham knew that he could decide not to trust God. He could say no run around in fear, and try to hide. But he was determined from the beginning what to do. Mm -hmm. The next morning, Abraham woke up his son very early. Come, Isaac. Huh? Let's go for a walk. Since Isaac was already a young man, Abraham had him carry the firewood. He told his son that they were going to offer a sacrifice to God. Abraham carried the knife. Sometimes Isaac had made offerings to God to thank him, but this time it was different. Something was missing. Papa, Isaac said to him, Tell me, my son. I have the firewood. But, but where is the lamb that we will sacrifice as an offering? And Abraham answered, God will provide. When they arrived, Abraham built an altar. Then he told Isaac to get onto it. Huh? Me? Isaac looked at his father and could see in his father's eyes the love he felt for him. So Isaac decided to trust his father. Abraham stood next to Isaac with the knife held high. Just as he was going to kill his son, an angel called him, Abraham, and Abraham stopped. Do not hurt the boy. You have already shown how much you trust God for everything, including to give him the life of Isaac, who is very special to you. Blah, 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 blah. Abraham looked back 
and he saw a ram entangled in a bush. The angel called him again from heaven. Abraham, God says that because you trust him so much, he will make your descendants as great as the stars of heaven. All families of the world will be blessed because of you. Isaac and his father embraced. Both the father and son were very happy to be together. My first Bible presents A Wife for Isaac. A few years later, Abraham, already very old, said to his servant, I do not want Isaac to marry a Canaanite woman from this land. Mm -hmm. I want you to go to my country to find a wife for Isaac. Mm -hmm. The servant answered, Maybe the woman will not want to come with me to this land, so I should take your son there with me. No, be very careful not to take my son there, Abraham told him. The Lord God of the heavens huh? took me out of that land and promised to me, saying, This is the land that I will give to my offspring. So God will guide you and send his angel before you. And from there you will take a woman for my son. But there is no way you will take my son there. Mm -hmm. This was a nearly impossible mission because there were too many women to choose the right one. Then the servant departed to the land where Abraham directed him. When he finally arrived, stay here. the servant had the camel stay by a well. It was the afternoon when the young women went out to fetch water from the well. Then the servant prayed, God of my master Abraham, choose the woman that you know is right for Isaac. Please tell me who it is. If I ask her for water and she says drink, and I will give your camels water too, then I'll know it's the one. Amen. After a while, the servant saw a group of young women heading towards the well. The servant came over and asked them, Please, give me some water from your pitcher. This was the proof that he needed. And one answered, Drink, and I will also give water to your camels. Woohoo! The servant was very excited. It didn't take long for him to explain to her what his mission was. The young woman who had passed the test was named Rebecca, the one who would soon become Isaac's wife. The day that the servant and Rebecca with some of her servants arrived, it was evening time, and Isaac had gone out into the field to meditate. When he looked up, he saw the camels approaching. Oh, who is this beautiful woman? asked Isaac. At the same time, Rebecca saw Isaac and asked the servant, Who is that handsome man? That's Isaac. She immediately covered her face with the veil, but his eyes sparkled when Isaac stopped the camel. It was love at first sight. God knew exactly who could take care of Isaac and who could take care of Rebecca. Hey, comment and subscribe below!